Partnership Accounting, recording the initial investments in a partnership as well as the division of income and the statement of partnership equity. The statement of partnership equity is just like a statement of owner's equity except for we have to record the equity by each individual partner instead of by one owner which you would have in a sole proprietorship. If the partners initially invest cash, the journal entry is cash, going to debit cash, and then credit the capital account for the value of the cash. If the partners initially invest cash, non-cash assets, and liabilities, then we have to consider the balance that should be recorded in the capital account. In this instance, Zane has invested $7,000 in cash, a $33,000 building, and then there's a note payable also that has been become part of the partnership property. So Zane's capital is going to be assets minus the liability. Well, we have 40000 in assets, 10000 in liabilities, which means that Zane's capital value is $30,000. Next, once the partnership operations begin and it begins to uh, generate income, the partners must now divide the income and loss. We're going to be focusing on income, but there also could be a loss. But for right now, our example will focus on income. So let's talk about the dynamics of a partnership. There are no salaries on the income statement for the partners. So the partners have uh, the three traditional, well, the four traditional uh, financial statements. They have a balance sheet, they have an income statement, they have a statement of partnerships, partnership equity, as well as a statement of cash flows. So on the income statement, you will never see a salary. So you'll never see partner salary expense. Partners are considered to be owners and not employees. They can, however, receive a salary allowance as part of their capital account. So you would find it in the partnership equity section of um, the uh, financial statements under the statement of partnership equity. Additionally, no partner interest expense would be seen on the income statement for partners. They can, however, receive an interest allowance as part of their capital account. Now let's talk a little bit about this dynamic before we talk about the four methods to divide income or loss. Partnerships are formed for a variety of reasons and can have a variety of different dynamics. One partner may be working um, more with clients than another partner. Another partner may have brought the clients in and may be somewhat semi-retired, but he brought the clients, so the other partner is happy to be in the partnership. But because the other partner without the client base is doing a lot of the work, he may be given a salary allowance to commensurate him for to to pay him essentially for um, doing more of, of the work uh, associated with the clients. Additionally, one partner may have invested a great deal of assets into the partnership. Maybe they're not savvy, they're not business-wise, they have a lot of assets, maybe they're not that interested in working with the client base and the day-to-day -day operations, but they're going to give him a bit of an interest as though they were paying him interest for the use of his assets. And so that's why you have this dynamic going on. After we've taken into consideration in the capital accounts, a salary allowance and an interest allowance, then there are four methods to divide the remaining income from net income. Remember, we're talking about once the partnership operations have begun, now they're going to try to divide up the income or loss. So there are four methods. In the absence of an agreement, the law requires each partner to receive an equal share. It can be divvied up based upon a stated ratio basis outlined in the partnership agreement. It also can be a ratio of the capital balances. Though the capital balances will change, the partners will have to recalculate the ratios as they change. 
Additionally, we could have the more complicated one of after consideration of the salary and interest allowance, the partners can share the remainder according to the partnership agreement, either equally or on another basis, such as the stated ratio basis or the ratio of capital balances. And I'm going to show you an example of each. The stated ratio method of dividing income. The ratio can be stated as one-third and two-thirds, one-eighth, two-eighths, or five-eighths, and can be any derivative of however they want to share the income, and it has to be agreed to within the partnership agreement. Another way of looking at the ratios, or the way they can be stated, is a 5-4-3 split which translate to a total of 12. So 5 plus 4 plus 3 equals 12. And the partners will respectively receive 5 twelfths, 4 twelfths, and 3 twelfths of the income. So if the income is 60000 and they share one-third and two-thirds, the journal entry would be income summary because we're closing out income. Remember the closing of um, accounts uh, from... Um, Close the accounting cycle, the closing portion of the accounting cycle. So now we're going to be debiting income summary and crediting to the capital accounts. And so this represents two thirds and this represents one third. If it had been by twelfths, then this represents the um, income and this would represent five twelfths, four twelfths, and three twelfths. It just depends upon what they agreed to. But a stated ratio basis is um, set. It's defined throughout the partnership agreement um, until such time as a new partnership is, uh, is, def is uh, comes into being. All right, so now let's look at the capital balances method of dividing income. If the beginning capital balances, and you have to use the beginning capital balances because once you start dividing income and taking into consideration withdrawals and so forth, then all of this changes. So you have to start with beginning capital balances because that is known at the beginning of the process. So if beginning capital balances are Zane 30,000, Perez 10,000, then you would add the capital balances together and take each por partner's portion of the total, which would be 30,000 to 40,000 for Zane, right? We had 30,000 here and 10,000 here together. Added together, that's 40,000. So 30,000 out of 40,000 for Zane and 10,000 out of 40,000 per as, or simply three-fourths and one-fourth. So if net income is 60,000, the journal entry would be three-fourths to Zane, one-fourth to Perez. Allocation with salary, interest, and the partnership agreement basis for the remainder. So this is the more complicated one. In this instance, we're going to give Zane a salary allowance of 36000 Perez a salary allowance of 24000 Additionally, they're going to have interest allocated to them of 10% based upon their beginning capital balances. Remember, because everything after this is going to be very dynamic and the capital balances are going to change. So you have to look at the beginning capital balances and in this instance the remainder will be shared equally but it could be based any upon any of the previously stated methods to divide income so in this instance net income is 70,000 so net income 70,000 here is Zane and here's Perez so here's our salary allowance 36 to Zane 24 to Perez now let's look at our interest all, uh, allocation or allowance. So we know Zane had a beginning capital balance of 30,000. So 30,000 times 10% is 3,000. Perez had a beginning capital balance of 10,000 times 10%, and that would be 1,000. So altogether, taking into consideration salary and interest, 39,000 to Zane plus 25,000 to Perez, a total of 64,000 has already been taken out of net income. So it's coming out of net income. So net income, after taking into consideration these individual allowances, the remainder is 6,000. So the remainder to be shared is 6,000. The income in this instance will be shared equally. So one half of 6,000 is 3,000 to Zane, 3,000 to Perez. We can see by adding those together that you know, the net income has been fully allocated. So the changes to the capital balance would be 42,000 to Zane and 28,000 to Perez. 
Now this is why I say you have to calculate the interest allowance on the beginning capital balances because if you did it based upon this and then you calculate it, well then this interest allowance is going to change and you would be in a forever a cycle of changing things. So you have to start someplace and you start with the beginning capital balances. All right, so capital balance after income distributions and any withdrawals. So what does the statement of partnership equity look like? So in addition to the prior example, Zane withdrew 20000 and Perez drew 12000 So our beginning capital balances, since this is a new partnership, were zero. During the period under consideration, they invested 30000 for Zane, twenty, I mean 10000 for Perez. We have our salary allowance. We have our interest allowance, which we calculate on the prior page. The balance of the income al uh, allocated, which we looked at from the prior page. And so now the total net income distribution was 42000 to Zane, 28000 to Perez for a total of 70000 Now it's not the end of the story because now we have to take into consideration their withdrawals. So Zane withdrew, withdrew 20000 Perez withdrew 12000 So now the changes to their capital balance, their respective new capital balances are 52000 for Zane, 26000 Perez for a total of 78000 So if they shared based upon their capital balances, the respective ratios would now change. Now it would be 52000 out of, 52, of 78000 for Zane. 26,000 out of 78,000 for Perez. So next year when they go to divvy things up, if they do it based on capital balances, then this would be their starting point for divvying up capital balances.